I never understand how some people think, you know, you're in the midst of a domestic situation, you know the cops are coming and you decide to answer the door with an AK. Hi everyone, welcome to today's badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Carrillo. I'm your co-host, Mike Williver. Today's video comes to us from Fountain, Colorado. You should be proud of him. He remembered that name for like, like four 12 in a row. seconds. Four in a row, dude. That's pretty good. Today's video was brought to us by Mantis. The Mantis family of products is integral to ASP staff building handgun and carbine skills and are your most economical and fastest path to improvement in your skills too. Whether you choose the X10, the Laser Academy, the Blackbeard, or use them all in concert, they will help your practice be more effective, efficient, and fun. Go check them out, pick up a unit, and thank them for sponsoring today's video. Officers are here responding to a DV call. Mom has tried to get out of the house with her child, wasn't able to get out of the house, eventually got out herself, called the cops, they interviewed her. Now you can see, they know that this guy has um, previously harassed a cop after a DUI arrest. We know this is a DV. They know that there's problems ahead like there are all the time. We have badge cam audio. Let's listen to it all go to heck. Good, I'm good. I'm good. Do a swipe right now, secondary. I'm good. You good? Yeah, that's what brought him back. K961, can we get medical started? I did fire one round and hit the suspect. Hey, put the gun down. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. Put the fucking gun down now. Get behind cover, Ryder. Ryder. All right, drop back. Get in the house, get in the house. Three Frank 21, send everybody right now. Check yourself right now, check yourself. Do a swipe right now, secondary. Three Frank 21, he had an AK style rifle fired at us. Break, did you fire? That's My fucking gun jammed. Here's a picture of the firearm that he used. Um, he fired a whole bunch of rounds their way through the doorway after that first shot by the officer hit him in the torso. They did eventually approach him. He was combative and non-compliant uh, to them after they approached him. He did end up passing away of his injuries in, uh, once they got him to the hospital. Thankfully, nobody else was harmed. You know, I, I think sometimes people are like, why would you do something like that? But you know what? I don't want to know why he'd do something like that. No, just, 
Don't do that. Don't, well, don't. don't beat your wife, right? But also don't come to the door with a gun. You know, Mike, we see it repeatedly. DV calls are the most dangerous, especially ones where the guy has harassed you in the past. We know this is just not going to go well, even before it starts. Yeah, there, there's very little chance. And you hate these calls as a law enforcement officer. There's very little chance, and you know it going in, that this guy's going to be cooperative, that you can actually talk to him and get to the bottom of what's going on. He's just going to be difficult. Uh, I don't know that you're expecting him to come to the door with an AK pattern rifle, but that's what ended up happening. And this is why we don't stand in front of the door, which neither one of them did to their, uh, to their credit. I will also mention, hey, look around. If they have surveillance cameras or a Zoom camera, understand that they can see you and see where you are. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I also really want to commend this officer for using his ears and not just his eyes. You know, we talk about paying attention and we also talk in, in successful law enforcement and private citizen gunfights about paying attention to the right thing and knowing what are the important cues. And this officer used not only his eyes, but his ears. And because of that, he had some knowledge coming in that this was going to be a problem. So, so hear me, officers, you, you, you gotta listen to the inside of that door. And if you get clues like this, do something to make yourself safer. This officer did by drawing his gun. Absolutely. Another thing, this is why they make sure that you can see and smell and hear and all those things when you sign up to be a, a cop. It's very important that you be able to smell things like smoke or pepper spray or whatever. And it's important your hearing is good enough to hear something like that. And the fact that he was present enough in that moment and not thinking about what's happening next, but what's happening right now, that he was able to hear that, identify it for what it was, because there's, you know, the fact that he did work the action on that rifle inside the house is great because it warned him he was going to have a gun before he ever opened the door. But it's possible he could have walked out to that door with a gun already chambered and then we wouldn't at least have that couple seconds of heads up, which they did, fortunately. Yeah, and, and listen, I know some people are going to be like, oh, okay, well, it's totally his constitutional right to come to the door with a gun. Now, okay, we can argue that in other cases. I don't think it's wise at any time. Talk through the door if you're not sure who's going to be there or whatever. Don't open the door. But secondarily, this guy's in the middle of a DV incident. He's had problems with the cops before. She's gotten out of the house and he knows it. He knows the cops are on the way. He knows who this is at the door. So I don't buy any of that. This guy just wanted to flex on the cops and see if he could intimidate them. And oh, I have my constitutional rights. And when you exercise your rights at people and point a rifle at cops, you're gonna get shot. So I don't buy that particular one here. I know some folks are also gonna say, well, you know, they're shining their light at him. They never identified themselves as cops. We're gonna see here in a little while, the officer actually turns the light towards himself. And, and so he's not blinding the guy. The guy can see him. They give him like four commands afterwards. I don't buy any of that. I think this guy is not a good human and, and he deserved what he had coming here. Sure. So let's play it out. If you're, if you're of the mind that this guy is just exercising his constitutional rights, as John said, he's exercising them at someone, which is never a good idea. Um, let's play it out. So you're there at the door with a rifle and you have no idea the cops are on the way, let's say. And the cop the cops show up, they come to the door. You have a Zoom or Zoom. I said Zoom. Uh, what do I call it? Ring. Sorry. Ring camera. Um, you probably have a peephole in the door. You can talk through the door. Don't open the door just yet. Let's say, hey, who's who's there? And if you don't believe it's the police, hey, I'm going to call 911 and verify that it's you. Call 911. Do all those things. This is the wrong thing to do. And as John said, at one point, the officer lowers the flashlight so the guy can see him clearly. And this guy never had any intention on dropping that gun. He never did. And now I am going to say here, we're going to see in the next frames that the officer is going to turn the light towards himself because he wants to get two hands on the gun. I want you to notice as well, he has a light mounted on that pistol, but he's not using it. Instead, he's holding onto that handheld light. I don't wanna give him too much trash about that, but please officers hear me. Learn to drop what's in your hands, drop that handheld light and activate your pistol mounted light. You're in an emergency situation here. You need to see what's going on. That's why you have a pistol mounted light. That's literally what it's for. You gotta train with it though, so that you are ready to use it. So he turns the light away from this guy, hollers at him. To, to get the, you know, uh, drop the gun, whatever. And this guy says, you better step back. This guy is pointing a rifle at officers. And I think they gave him way more chances, knowing for sure the fact that if he shoots one of them, their, their armor is at, not in any way rated to stop rifle fire. Yeah, hot knife through butter. They're, 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 we, we went to the range once and shot a bunch of expired vests, which are still fine. The, the expiration date um, is the expiration date because they want to make sure it's 100% through the life of the vest. But we take expired vests that were just expired a month ago that should still be 3A. And we put buckshot in them. We put 9 mil rounds in them. Uh, we even did a little, a little, you know, fake me out, non-scientific back, back face deformation test to see how far, you know, it deformed into the, into the body armor. That body armor is not doing anything for him. And I got to, I have to echo what you said here, John. I don't know if 
again, we don't see what the officer sees. We see what the badge cam sees. From the other officer's badge cam, we can tell that he has this thing, if not pointed, very close to pointed at the officer. And if the officer knew that gun was pointed at him, I think he gave him way too much time because he, all he has to do is either just pull the trigger or move it slightly and pull the trigger. Uh, and I want to see officers confident in, in the legality of what they're able to do in a situation like this. And what you're able to do is to shoot this person to stop them from shooting you. Cause that's, I think what's going to happen eventually. And he did. And, and great marksmanship did what he needed to do in the moment. Now I, I think his brain short circuited a little bit here. I totally get, Oh no, I got to go get myself to a safer place. Cause rifle fire is coming out that door. And I think he's struggling to figure out where do I go and what do I do? And, and that uh, makes a lot of sense to me, but kind of running a circle around the neighborhood was a little difficult for me to understand. So Mike, I, I don't know, what are your thoughts on what he's doing here? I honestly have the least judgment right now because if you've ever heard a rifle, so especially one of that caliber, fired in the wild without hearing protection, it is an, it, it is an incredibly loud, incredibly intimidating sound. Um, you know, I don't love that he did this. I would have rather he identified cover quickly and got to it. Um, but this is just a matter of him going, uh, first of all, I just shot someone probably the first time ever. Number two, he's shooting back at me in, in God knows what direction. There is no safe direction for me to go in right now. And yeah, it's an incredible cognitive load for him to be under. I think he performed as well as you could hope. Uh, he did go and find his partner. And I think, John, you wanted to talk here about the partner and how very level and professional and calm, despite his earlier malfunction, his comms were fantastic. Yeah, he, his comms were fantastic. His control of his emotions were really, really good. Now let's think about what he's doing here. He did a couple of things really well, but we also get some really interesting stuff about a malfunction clearance here. So you see the officer, he's got his handheld light in his hand and now he's gonna get his gun up. I wanna note here that this officer dropped his flashlight. He dropped his flashlight out of his hand to get two hands on his gun. This is a very good thing in light of the fact that he's about to have some serious malfunction problems and he had a flashlight in his hand, it would get way worse for him to deal with them. He's gonna get a click when he wants a bang and that's the second loudest sound around. You see him here, the guy's like gonna go, oh, okay, he fires, our officer tries to fire. He taps and then racks, and now his gun is in a bad spot. The, the, the slide has stayed to the rear. This has induced what we would call a, a double feed malfunction. Now, what had happened here? Well, it didn't go bang, and then his extractor failed to extract that round, and now he's got a second round stuck in there. This is probably the hardest malfunction to clear. And we've done videos on active cell protection extra on this, on the fastest way to clear this kind of double feed malfunction. But you got to recognize you're in a bad spot here. And Mike, I don't know why this is. Could be a total fluke, but also leads me to think, wait a minute, has this gun been well maintained? Does this officer fire it enough and train with it enough to really know that it's a reliable pistol? If so, maybe it's a unicorn event, but man, I don't see this in well-lubed, well-maintained guns very often at all. Yeah, I've seen it a few times, but you, you said hardly at all because it does happen, right? I mean, it happens occasionally with a well-maintained gun. It could be... Um, what I've seen more than anything is an older gun that has tens of thousands of rounds through it. And now you have an extractor that's just worn out and it just picked the worst possible time to actually fail completely. Um, but the odds are not throwing any shade at this officer. Odds are that that gun wasn't well maintained. It wasn't lubricated properly. And so that was, that was part of the issue with that said, this is exactly why I carried a backup gun on my outer carrier vest. And I carried it right here, right in the center where I can get to it with either hand. So that if I have this sort of, um, this sort of a malfunction that seems terminal, or at least is going to take so long to clear that it risks your life to continue to mess with this gun. I can literally just discard that gun, come out with that secondary gun here, usually a backup, a Glock 26 or, or a, a P2000SK or whatever. Something small and compact I can keep here and know that that's there. Kind of like when you have a malfunction with a long gun and it gets, becomes complicated, you're in the middle of a gunfight, might be better to just switch to your pistol at that moment. The key is knowing when to do that. That's why transition drills are so important on the range, whether live fire or force on force. And, and this is an important thing for cops to do. Private citizens, not as much. Now watch how he clears it. Watch once he clears the magazine out of the gun, look at what goes down. The slide goes home and that has cleared the problem. Okay, so he's pulled that out and slammed that home. So now all he has to do is get this gun reloaded and ready to rock. We teach this all the time. In, in the traditional version of this, it's lock the slide to the rear, then pull the magazine out. What we found, hit the magazine release button, rip that magazine out, and it will almost always clear. Now, you may still have a dead round inside the gun, right? What we normally see is rip the magazine out, check the magazine with your eyes real quick to make sure that you haven't got a magazine flipping you the bird. We're going to see that in a minute. 
then sl if it's not, slam that magazine back home and rock and roll. But for cops, I'd recommend to ditch that magazine. I know you've got at least three on your vest, right? So I, I think every agency that I know of requires at least two, if not three magazines. Get, a, get a, a new one and go to work with that one, run the action and go to town because what we're gonna see here, Mike, in just a second is, is that that one is flipping him the bird from the top and it's gonna cause him another malfunction. Again, this is why these drills are so important. They're critical. Uh, malfunction drills are something that has to be part of the training program. You have to do that. You have to do it with some frequency. And it is a perishable skill like marksmanship. You have to practice it every so often. You can't just learn it once at the range in the academy and expect to be able to do it 15 years later when you end up in your gunfight. This magazine is, in fact, giving this guy the finger right now. Um, I... I I, I talked to a guy on the podcast a couple of years ago, Tim Grammons from the Skokie, Illinois PD. He had a gunfight with a guy who was very determined and, and was he was getting repeated hits and that guy was not going down. So it is critical that you get as many. Don't be, you know, don't be tackleberry and have band layers of, you know, of Glock magazines across your chest. But there's no reason not to have one or two on your belt, two or three or even four more on your vest. There's, magazines are small. There's plenty of room. And if you find yourself in the unlikely position where, you're pinned down for an extended period of time and dealing with a moving target or whatever the case may be, you'll be very, very glad to have all those extra magazines on you in that event. Yeah, and, and listen, he ends up finally getting, you're gonna see him have a secondary malfunction here because he's gonna slam that magazine home that's giving him the bird, and then guess what? It's going to cause a secondary malfunction. Now he's gotta clear that and it takes forever. How long does it end up taking him to clear this malfunction? Over a gunfight, that's how long it took, right? So this gun was out of the fight and he was out of the fight. He was not a material participant in the gunfight. Only the first officer was. Now that said, I really do think his emotional control was exemplary. His follow-up was exemplary, but now imagine him holding long on this guy going, is this gun that's in my hand worth a darn? So this is why for, for police officers, I, I think number one, make sure your firearm is maintained, right? Make sure that you know for sure that it is incredibly reliable. Number two, I do think for cops, a backup gun is not a problem, not wrong and probably a necessary item. Um, at the end of things, I think these officers uh, were put in a really crap situation. I think that they did a very good job and handled that threat in front of them, even at huge risk of their own life. And I would say, unfortunately, you know, this guy got what was coming to him, but that was his choice. They covered their ass.